What's up guys, welcome back to my tech corner. In today's video, I'm going to be taking a look at the XFX RX 5700 XT Thick 3 Ultra. This is one of my favorites in my collection, so I'm really excited to make this video. Also, make sure to stick around till the end of the video for a bonus teardown of this card to see what the PCB looks like. Coming out July 7th, 2019, the Thick 3 Ultra was supposed to be an improved version of the Thick 2, as the Thick 2 had some bad reception thermally. This one didn't handle too well either, but more on that later. This video card is a 5700 XT, and uses the RDNA 1.0 architecture, so the first Navi. This proved to be a much needed upgrade from the Vega and RX 500 series, as this processor had 10.3 million transistors. This video card has an 1810 MHz base clock and a 1935 MHz boost clock. The memory this video card has is 8GB of GDDR6, not to be confused with GDDR6X, and has a bandwidth of 448GB a second. Now this video card offered these ultra fast speeds via PCI Express 4.0 by 16. This video card will also take up 3 expansion slots because of its robust and powerful cooling method. I upgraded to this video card a while back from a Radeon HD 7970, so the change this video card made was really insane. I really like how fancy and modern the card looks though. I really like how the fans are different sizes as well. Very fancy XFX. Oh, and another thing about this card is the fact that it has a dual BIOS installed on it. So one side is quieter performance and the other side is easier overclocking and higher performance. I just thought that was pretty cool. Anyways, let's go ahead and stick this in my build and test it out. These are the games I'll be strutting out the card with. I'll be doing different resolutions and using a custom fan curve I made. The clocks, however, will stay the same. I finally have a brand new display as well, so this will be really interesting to see. So let's get into it. That was really interesting. The card performed really well from 1080p to 1440p ultra wide, but around 4K it didn't do too well. That's to be expected, this card wasn't really made to run at 4K, but can surprisingly knock out some games at that resolution actually. Still though, this card put up a really good fight, and I'm really happy with it. Definitely a thumbs up for me. Let me know what you guys thought about it in the comments. Now, digressing back to the cooling method for this video card, as good as it looks, I feel like this heatsink definitely isn't big enough and cannot withstand the 5700XT's 225W TDP. Even with some Noctua NTH1 and brand new high thermal conductivity thermal pads, it still did not hold up too well. Something that could help with this is definitely enlarging the fans and heatsink. Maybe have some 120s on there rather than three smaller fans. Maybe remove the plastic coverings next to the backplate to allow hot air to escape to the top of the case. Those are just my thoughts. Oh, and another thing that I would like to address is you guys might be wondering why I don't include other games. Well, this is because either I don't find them interesting or I just don't own them and I'm definitely not willing to purchase them either. The games I benchmark are the hardest games to run for the video cards I own, and that's why I use them consistently in my videos. Anyways, here's the teardown of the card's PCB. Alrighty, that'll have to do it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked the video, go ahead and leave a like, dislike if you didn't, and comment down below what you guys thought about this video card. And I'll see you guys in the next one.